Hi there, and welcome to Board Chitless, a podcast all about games that we've played. I'm Lecky, and this week I'm joined by... Sam. Dave. Jackie. And Tristan. And we've been playing Spartacus, a game of blood and treachery. Yeah! <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Spartacus, a game of blood and treachery, TM, is a game based all on the Stars Network TV program. Uh, it was a couple of series all about Spartacus, not the Spartacus, but a Spartacus, who was a kick-ass gladiator in Roman times. And the TV program's all about people getting one over and other people in order to kill people and get money and stuff. And the board game is exactly like that, both in real life and in the game itself. So you play as the... Is it the Dominus? Is that the guy who's in yeah. charge? Domina, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't so think there's a female. Domina. Domina. Is the in this. Domina. Yeah. Yeah. So you play, yeah, as the guys Dominus. from the TV series who are running the gladiator houses mm. and you're conniving and competing with each other to become the most influential. So you actually mm. just have to get up to 12 influence, which sounds easy. Um, and you start off at four because we always play the medium length game and we've never played the full length game, which is like starts at one because that would go on forever. Yeah. It um, says two to three hours in the box, but I'm not sure what... You probably went about that's two three to three hours. hours per difficulty level. Yeah, plus with <laughs> six players. <laughs> like, you know, you're multiplying it again, aren't you, with six people? It's yeah. Like yeah. Two to three hours. Yes. yes. Per person. <laughs> <laughs> There's a well, lot... No, we, we cleared it in four hours tonight, I think. The two to three hours is just a base game as well. It's not the ex- including the expansion that we had. I don't know if the expansions... Oh, yeah, no, the expansions do uh, make it run longer because they accept more people. So we've got both of the expansions for this shuffled in and you can have up to seven players. We had six tonight, but Daz has left early because he's lame. But yeah, it shines the more players. It's one of those games where the more players, the more fun. Yeah, it's all about the human element, isn't it? It's, um, there's so much of a take that element to the game where it's actually the major mechanic for stopping the game from ending pretty pretty much straight away oh it's, it's a king bashing game and no mistake like the second anybody gets ahead everybody else points that out and then they have to get them yeah uh, everybody has to get them and bring them down and then you have to you have to scrabble because the, the idea of the game is to get to 12 influence and stay on that for at least the end of the phase so there's three phases there's the upkeep there's the intrigue phase where you're playing schemes on each other mm-hmm. trying to steal other people's gladiators and slaves and gain influence and do all that stuff and then there's the actual arena phase where you, you send the gladiators to fight against each other. So you've got to get to 12 influence and stay at 12 till the end of whichever phase you're at. And that's the key, isn't it? And, and doing that and not getting boned by everybody else along the way. And that's the fun. Yeah. Then you've got the market, though, where everyone starts bidding for slaves, gladiators, and for weapons and special articles. Yeah. And then after that, you hit the arena. But yeah. not before you auction again for who's going to have the privilege of hosting, hosting the games and when you go to the arena it's a miniatures game mm. which is pretty robust actually i quite like the miniatures game more than the uh the political scheming side of it what do you think I of the miniatures well. game dave i quite like it it's fun it's fast it's um it's bloody there's not a lot of strategy to it i think when you start adding in weapons and stuff it does vary it a little bit but strategy wise it seems to play out. You can kind of guess that there was one fight tonight where I think most of us guessed wrong. It was the first fight between Tristan's Gladiator and Daz's. They yeah. were they were totally evenly matched when they were both starting Gladiators. Yeah, but I think attack has got more weight than defence, generally. But I, you bid on the attack I one bid on the attack. Yeah. And, and the defence one won. But, but your roles were all Ace. great and Daz's <laughs> were all awful. And I think... So, I mean, obviously it can go both ways, but generally I feel like you can kind of predict what's going to happen. The fight mechanic's pretty cool as well. You yeah. have like a dice pool uh, for attack, defense, and speed. And each time you take a damage, you lose one of those dice from your pool. Mm. So there's like an inevitability about it. And then if you go down to less than one in any of those stats, you lose. Um, if you go down to only one dice, you get injured. And if you go down to zero dice, you get decapitated. And that's the one that we're all... Mm, love it yeah. tonight Sam had a gladiator the thing from the pit who's like one of the most beastly dudes <laughs> and uh, he what was it Sam auto kill no yeah. auto decapitated yeah basically <laughs> anytime he beat anyone he auto killed auto decapitated them which meant that we were going in and because you're betting on the winner your wages are on the winner and whether there's an injury 
or decapitation by entering him in against all of the weaker starting gladiators, which everyone had because I got this gladiator in the first turn. We were just able to keep beating them time and time again and easily made my money back off him. It's only towards the later game where you start getting the more expensive, harder hitting gladiators that he suddenly becomes a lot more vulnerable. We, we loved it though because everyone else was making money off him as well. Yeah, yeah. Even the person getting decapitated was like, yeah. <laughs> it was a cash rich game, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, but the, the guy who you played, I think we said at the start, oh, that guy, he yeah, always Glover. wins. Shall we take him out? And then Sam ended up playing him. Um, but he didn't win this time. He nearly won. I was yeah. close. Yeah, you were close. Oh, you mean the actual Dominus, Sam's ability? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So every every Dominus has their own set of abilities, don't they, where they can discard like guards for influence or slaves for influence or gladiators for influence and whatever. Yeah. So, so that- he, that could be seen as a bit of a downside, though, as well, because it was straight away when the boards came out, we're like, oh, this guy, oh, yeah, he, he's got this uh, ability which makes it quite easy for him to win. Shall we take him out, sort of thing? And we didn't. And Sam almost ran away with it. Mm. So that could be like a bit of a downside to the game. You have to kind of keep your eye on. There's some of the. Uh, there's you a have few to keep them in check, don't there's you? There's a few of them. Yeah. Salonius, uh, Batiatus, and um, Glabber. Glabber. I roll, but Glabber's slightly different because he can keep guards hidden in his. You can keep him hidden in your hand, so you're never sure just how many Glabber's got. So, but tonight was it both me and Tristan jumped up like what six, seven influence at in the end. Go. So we jumped from like six or seven to twelve in one go. It almost I felt like it negated a lot of the abilities of the different characters do you think you'd prefer yeah. to play the long game like where you start at one i don't influence? know because you wouldn't be able to hit 12 on the track that quickly would did you? did you save up those cards oh yeah like I've, I've over, been the, sitting on them over for... the game because that's what i did and that's how i did it and i feel like the shorter game doesn't let you do that and i felt it was a bit of a sort of flurry finish like it wasn't a particularly satisfying finish and even if it would have gone to an arena fight i don't think it would have been if it had gone to an arena fight between you and me, you had gladiators and I yeah, had and you had a slave. slave. So that wouldn't, the, that wouldn't have been fun. No, it would, it would have just been an yeah. inevitability. Yeah. And the other thing was, it wasn't just cards. It was, we were using our uh, Dominus abilities when yeah. we to, yeah. to get the influence as well. So you have to juggle, mm. you have to hold those cards in hand, hope that nobody thwarts your schemes because you play these schemes to gain influence and everybody else has the option to sort of slam them down and stop them. Mm. And then you've got to, so you've got to survive all of that and stay at 12 influence. And I think, yeah, in the shorter game, you don't necessarily get to build up those hands. Or if you do, you can sort of play them down and claim victory quite quickly. Because th- is it seven seven influence you start with in the short game? Yeah, I think yeah. it's seven. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like that's, I feel like the theme shines more in those games. In the shorter ones? Yeah, because when you come from like six behind, like, and then everyone's scrabbling to sort of try and stop you. Because we had time to stop you. We just couldn't get through the guards. And then, every, and then Lucky's trying to help me at least draw with yeah. you. And then, <laughs> and then Daz, and then Daz thwarted that. And, but it, it, was, it was less a thematic sort of thing. It just felt like it was just, right, it's just gone pure mechanics now. And it, it felt like it just took some of the fun. Is that because yes. you didn't win? Well I, well, I was going to ask you, did you feel like that was, that was a satisfying sort of finish? Because obviously... I think any won. victory at Sparkus is satisfying. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't feel this one was because it basically you should have won. And yeah, but I don't think I would have felt you. particularly... Let's not confuse this for a fun game. It's stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. Friendships should be broken. They, they shatter. Game. They shatter in the wake of this game. Um, Tristan, There's a warning in the rule book. Tristan lied. He used the <laughs> deception. He, he I pretended. Never, ever lie. He said that if I gave him honey, I would get an extra influence point. I gave him the money and the influence point didn't come. And because I thought the influence point was coming, I didn't use one of the clever reaction cards that says, stop this guy from doing what he's doing immediately. I was playing the meta game. You're going to get that influence in the next game, Lecky. I promise. Mm, yeah, whatever, Strevs. But because I held back being foolish, um, Sam, I think, may have miscalculated. It may not have. Um, but I think he kind of gave a pass on the auto reaction, stop Tristan from winning the game card. Um, so that only gave me the option of trying to king make um, Dave, which then Daz used his reaction card to stop. To king make. Yeah, and I think in a normal game, maybe the reaction cards flow a lot quicker. Um, so you get some really awesome but weird instances where someone will throw down all their cards, get their influence right up, everyone will bring them down, then the next person will jump on that, and then 
the other one will just kind of scrabble to stop them. And then by the time it's the last person, they just kind of sneakily get by with the win. Mm. And it's the, a lot of the game is about timing, and it's amazing how quickly winning conditions come out out of seemingly nowhere. See, in the shorter game, it seems to be around sort of the 9 10 victory like influence that that is yeah. in danger and that's what makes glabber so dangerous in the shorter game because he can he only needs like a few guards to get that and you don't know that they're there yeah um whereas this it came from so far behind for both of us i wasn't actually planning to do that combo that turn i hadn't actually even worked it out i just knew i had like quite a lot of influence in my hand it wasn't until i realized oh god right i've, I've got to do something now that that came out I yeah. felt like my hand was forced because I saw the way Sam was building up to the win. Mm. I thought one more turn, he, he definitely would have had it. Yeah. So I had to. It was like a last ditch attempt to get everything down uh, that turn. Yeah. And I didn't honestly expect it would survive because you you play all your cards down in the intrigue phase, which is what how it ended tonight. And then everybody after you in turn order gets a chance to sort of either catch you up and get the same influence and then battle with you in the arena for the victory, or try and knock your influence down. So you, you do have to survive out at the end of the round, and I didn't expect that at all. And I wouldn't have if Dave's schemes had come off. So I do think it was close together, and I think that um, is the is similar to the, the, the short game, where it can it is anybody's sort of... Everybody's in it until the end. Yeah. I, well, I would, I would have gone to 12 victory points next turn. Yeah, it was, it was an inevitability, right? I had quite a lot of guards out to use that ability, but I'd saved up the money to guarantee I got the host, which would give me the influence. And I had the hardest gladiators, which would have put me in a favorable position for another win. Yeah. Which would give me influence. You were rolling in gold. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd been accumulating with this whole purpose of using that as the, the the last bit to get me influence that I needed. To get it out of the influence phase so that people couldn't use schemes or stop me from doing it. Sam it was, did a bit tough, though. You were like the most picked on player <laughs> from yeah. most of the game. We were like it trying was to fun. take you down. It was fun. But, was it with her head? Yeah, yeah. Exactly, that's exactly yeah. right. But like one of the, the things that I really like about this is there's so many small tactics involved throughout every different element. Small, bitter, narrow-minded tactics, <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it is, but like when, when you come to trying to host, that is you compete with everyone else and you're playing a game against mind games against everyone, then it's about who you're inviting. People are bidding for that and you want to make sure you're going to get the wins. And it's who you then send is what you send them with. So there's lots of little things that can influence everything. And you might go, I've got no chance in this. So yeah. I'm going to throw my weedy slave in the mix. That's what and you then, did, Jackie, right? And just bet. Yeah. You hosted a, a a fight, but you didn't actually send any of your guys. Yeah, that's right. I, I just wanted just to... Bet against points. yourself, yeah, almost. Yeah. To actually host it, yeah. 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 So, so you, you sent my guy to his death against Sam's killing machine instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But by doing that, Jack was able to get the influence for that and also get the winnings from a decapitation. Yeah. Um, so you can actually play it the... puts you in control of yeah, yeah. the outcome more. And then the next turn, you're the host, so you're the first person to act, which can throw things out for the influence phase. Yeah. And the blind bidding is a really cool way of doing things as well. So you're bidding on items, slaves, everything, then on the hosting yeah. Oh, yeah. There's nothing more satisfying than seeing somebody else overbid like 12 gold for a, like a helmet or something. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> when, just because they got so caught up in, I want this thing. So I'm just going to keep bidding. And it's bidding when you keep pushing. It's when you can literally see them snap. So, like, the, <laughs> like the logic yeah, snaps. The, the blind bidding's brilliant because you. You all, you've got your hands under the table and you're secretly putting as much money as you can in your right hand and then you all reveal at the same time. But if any two players tie, then you put the money down on the table and do it again. So you might put six gold down in the first instance, then six again in the second instance. And then, all right, I'm go whatever, I'm going to put nine down this time. But then your opponent just all opens up the hand and there's nothing there. And it's, you can just see, Wounding. Yeah, you can just see someone break at that point. And you realise you spent like 16 gold for a helmet that's worth one. Some, some crazy Which you then try made. to sell the next turn, Sam. Yeah, but it's, it's, um, it's, it's one of very many fun mechanics. And the game itself feels like about four or five mini games that have been really expertly bolted together to create this one mega game. This feels like one of the first games where it was based on an IP like a TV show that actually really holds up well. Like yeah. before that, you had all the sort of Buffy Monopoly time, time cash in. I don't piece know. Battlestar Galactica, I thought, was really. Uh... Did that come before this? Yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah. Pretty sure. 
99% sure. But it was no Spartacus. It was no Spartacus. I mean, what Spartacus? No. Who's Spartacus? He's, he's a gladiator that's not the original Spartacus. <laughs> <laughs> don't they? They call him Spartacus ironically, don't they? Because he's yeah. almost like as good as that that's Spartacus. Not, mm, yeah. yeah. And then but no, I think, uh, I think you were right. It is like loads of mini games, and I think each mm. one's really exciting. Or yeah. can be. Sometimes the combat can be a little bit like, well, we know it's. There was one fight, wasn't there? But it was a Primus where we just had two slaves. You insisted on rolling it out. We could have just skipped that and skipped 15 minutes. It was <laughs> double decapitation. Yeah, yeah, it was important to find out who won because, like, Sam's gladiator kills, uh, decapitates the mm. victors. Whereas, if was it your gladiator, Lucky? Was the other one? Yeah, like, he would. If he, he could have just wasn't beaten him up. But you yeah. could have yeah. just decided that Lucky's wasn't going to fight, and the thing could have killed both the slaves. Like. Yeah. No problem. But he had to fight so he'd be the champion. Yeah. The champion of Capua. Um so, so but but most of the fights were exciting, but just not that but so, yeah, some, some of them are very scripted, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Some yeah. of them can most be damn out tedious. Primuses as well, weren't they? But that that, yeah. that depends on the people that host though. The people that host or the, the dominus that host should pick a fair fight, but they never do because they wanna yeah. influence mm-hmm. the outcome. But the best fights are definitely when you pitch two gladiators against each other yeah. that are built to fight each other and we we had that rarely in this yeah. game that's when that's when that's the fighting before, gets exciting. and that's when it's been yeah but mm. it was just the, the way that it panned out tonight plus there was that cheeky someone turned it into a festival before the fight started so that the two people with the weaker gladiators got to chuck them out of the ring and throw slaves in instead which is like just meat into the grinder at that point yeah, yeah. it's still fun to watch it was yeah <laughs> and we, we had a really fun fight where um i managed to decapitate your gladiator outright by using my champion more fun for you i would say <laughs> yeah yeah a lot, a lot of kiting going on a lot of mods it can get stale the battle arena but at the same time it does provide a few nice stories for a game because the battles don't up. last that long no they, they don't last long enough to outstay it's, it's yeah five minutes if kind that, of yeah. so even if it starts getting stale it's over before you sort of worry about that yeah, and the betting ensures everyone's got skin in the game as long as you've got some gold. And then you just exchange it and rip people off and connive and yeah, yeah. <laughs> backstab but even at that stage. So, yeah. fun times. The first time I played this game was at the Expo a couple of years ago and I won. Um, and it was a bit of a shock win because I think everyone else was so busy trying to do one over <laughs> on each other <laughs> that I ended up giving my guys like lots of uh, boasts and things like that and I ended up just being like oh look I won sort of thing and then no one even noticed but this time round I got really unlucky which I think can happen I kept getting reaction cards in my hand I think I got three blue cards to the be whole fair, game you had a reaction card that could have stopped Tristan winning I know because <laughs> I thought that reaction card could have got stopped by a guard and I see he already had one still you can't so, yeah yeah so yeah. that was my mistake yeah well me, me and Sam sat on our reaction cards for no better reason than like I thought I was going to get a point out of it and Sam yeah. just missed I thought I thought he had another scheme to play yeah, and I was waiting for the last one to play it down. There were yeah, yeah. I had three schemes that were enacted before I even did my house ability yeah. as well. So, yeah. but we'd we'd watched Tristan and bartered with him pretty much all night, watched him build up this incredible tableau of like five guards, five gladiators, and five slaves that he could just spend for victory yeah. points. So you know, we had it coming. Oh, yes, I don't mind the exaggeration <laughs> there. I'll go with it. <laughs> Fifteen slaves. <laughs> there was lots. All of them. Yeah. So I only got like three schemes i think through the whole game which i think is pretty bad uh so i couldn't really build up my influence and use my schemes i had an ability where i could force people to help me with a scheme or they'd lose influence but because i didn't have a decent scheme they were they were rubbish they didn't benefit me or anyone else i kind of just got stuck where i was which i think you know is unlucky it won't happen very often but it's something that could happen in the game as well, which kind of ruined it a bit for me because it was like I couldn't really get anywhere. I know what you mean. I felt like I was fated to just hover around six or seven victory points. Um, yeah. I wasn't getting many of the cards that was like, you know, throw yourself up a victory point or two. Yeah. But then if I had have got those cards, I would have needed like four ready gladiators or five ready slaves and I wasn't really building them up. So I think I would have struggled to win this game anyway, depending yeah. on what cards had come out. Yeah, I think, um, I think when somebody's like quite far ahead, like Sam was quite far ahead very quick and then suddenly Daz was quite far ahead very quick. It's hard for people who were like, who I was hovering around for, I think, uh, influence for ages 
and it was just taking me forever to even get to I think I got to six at the end of the game and I was like right well you know I'm I'm not going to be able to well, me and me and Tristan were only at six when we won well, yeah. Tristan won. Yeah. But you know, you know, yeah. Interesting phrasing. When we had enough influence to win, yeah. we were only at like six. You were at six when I was at six. Yeah, we, we yeah. were all behind. Yeah. But you yeah. did have hand, obviously have cards in your hand that were going to be the end game for you guys. I didn't have any of those, mm. you know, so I was kind of just like, I didn't really have anywhere to go. Yeah. I, mean, I think can be a problem with the game. The luck is in the deck. I feel like the fights are much more deterministic. Yeah. Like they're really, like you can... Like I said, you can kind of see where fights are going to go before they go there, Cause just because of the way that you roll in handfuls of dice, which sounds like the randomest thing in the world, but it's, it isn't. This is a game that previously we've all spoken very highly about like before playing, and it, it feels a little bit like that conversation's changing tonight. There's there's a criticism coming out from like for all different elements of the game, which is fair enough. Do you think that maybe it's dropped a little in our previously very high estimation? We- We've played a lot more games since we last played Spartacus. So I don't know if um, generally just being exposed to other board games, much newer, fresher board games has kind of changed that a little bit, maybe. I don't think my opinions change of it. I still think it's a great game. But it's one of those games where you're so personally invested in what's happened around the table that when you don't win, it, it stings. It stings so bad <laughs> yeah. that it can affect how you talk about it just in a podcast following up. Yeah, I've, I've got to say, I'm struggling to come up with criticisms for it, having yeah, won. Me- mechanically, <laughs> mechanically, there's very little wrong with the game. There's a whole um, discussion thread on Board Game Geek about the meta of the combat arena, like which which gladiators are the best starting gladiators, which ones are the best ones to buy, which yeah. upgrades are the best ones to hold out for. But um, the game... that really is in how you interact with everyone else around the table. It's like playing Resistance, but with an actual game behind it rather than just throwing shade at each other and hoping that you win because of it. You need to be you need to be winning at all of those the mini games that you mentioned before. Yeah. And even down to saving up the right amount of cash so that when you get to the auctions and the cards start coming out and everything that you want is going to be in there at some point, you might even decide that during one round you don't bid for anything to save up for either hosting or getting some great gladiators and great slaves the next time around. And if your ability keys off having the most gladiators or having the most slaves or having the most guards, you can absolutely plan for that if you sort of stagger out, you know, what you're investing in each round. Yeah. So it, it, it comes back to what we said before about bidding like 12 gold for a helmet or whatever, <laughs> you know, and just making sure that all of those bids that you're making are really maxed, maximized. Yeah. Yeah, you you really need to keep other players in check as well because it, it's not a game if where you see you, people running ahead. Yeah, yeah, or even not even running ahead, but just getting if someone's gathering resources, like you had like quite a large tableau of everything, and everyone knew that you could just throw all that away at any point and get a load of victory points, but no one did anything about it because everyone's too busy trying to focusing on their own. Yeah, dominance. and you, you can't ignore. It's not one of those games where you like the classic Euro where you play in solitaire multiplayer. Yeah, you are invested in everything everybody does. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you can alter the outcome. In a, yeah, in you a can, Euro, yeah. you can block their space or yeah. um, collect more points. But in Spartacus, you can literally go, let's get him. Yeah. I'll give you gold. Let's team yeah. up. Let's get that guy. In. Mm. And with everyone bluffing about everything, it's impossible to have an efficient game. Like you can, you can make good decisions and you can have a good auction round or you can kind of like bid on something when no one else seems to really want it and get a good deal. Yeah. But likelihood is you're going to throw 10 coins down on a free <laughs> so much blagging. gladiator thinking everyone else is going to do the same and you find out you spent seven coins for no reason whatsoever at the same time you could that could cost you 15 and the last player what only bid 14 it's like you're completely unpredictable because you're playing other idiots around the table <laughs> <laughs> and it is it's a little bit like resistance avalon in that sense yeah, like yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you are relying on the blaggers around you to, to like exactly. pull together and you're trying to get tells of everybody like for every decision <laughs> yeah. you're making yeah and it's just it's just not going to work out that way um but as well i think we because we played with it there's the most players that we've played with tonight um so we've played with six players and that must really affect the card deck the card deck's massive. There's tons of cards in there. A lot of the cards are very similar. Like, you know, they, what, they must cycle about like 25 cards or something a few right. times. Um, so, like we were saying before about it, is a lot of it is the look of the draw. And I wonder if that might have affected the cards that me and Jackie got. 
I didn't see Daz play too many influence based scheme cards, but maybe that's because we were playing them as we were getting them as well and kind of getting frustrated a bit because someone would react to it or would hit a guard. So yeah, everyone, everyone had like a million guards on the table. So no one was playing schemes on each other. No, not yeah, really. I've it never was, seen that many was, guards in a yeah. game Spartacus before. It was a fairly conservative game, really. Considering you, Sam had about what seven was done previously. <laughs> eight. You had I, eight guards. I had eight, but I my my mission basically was to collect guards. Yeah. But I only got those. Ex- four of them were bought that starved other people, and I only got two others in the card. So I was like, I was getting frustrated that I wasn't seeing them. And then seeing them on everyone else's table. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to buy them off people. Like, obviously, they were going for a premium at that stage because they knew my tactics. One of Jackie's abilities was just pull guards out of the bin, wasn't it? So you just yeah. ripping them out of the discard as they were. So whenever no one discarded a card, a guard or used it, you were just like, I'll have it. Yeah, I would have to discard. No, I'd have to uh, tap three guards to get yeah. one out of the discard pile and tap it immediately. But that means next turn I'd have. Six guards. Yeah. So how many guards did you end up with? Like I think like, like nine? eight or nine. Yeah, it's impressive. And then I didn't even use them for anything, so it was great. We kept them out of Sam's <laughs> hand. It's good enough. Yeah, yeah. Not, 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 not jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, you were saying before that you know um, there's more criticism this time around with the game when we've been discussing it. I think a lot of that might be as well because we've changed it, the length. We we did the medium length where mm. we were used to the shorter games where it's like right quickly. Get, get cards out. Oh no, this person's at 11 already. Like, let's get them down. It was like more of a speed game, whereas this one is a slow burner. It was longer and I enjoyed it. It's just, I had trouble with it. I just think it's like anything. Like, the longer you, you sort of play it, the cracks show, don't they? Um, I still think it's a really, really fun game to play. The ending, I've had issues with the endings probably since the beginning. I don't like games where the ending just boom, like like, like Game of Vikings that we played. Um, j- things that can happen, like that come out of the blue. Like oh, Fallout yeah. as well. With yeah, the like agendas. Fallout and just yeah. stuff just happens and it's like, oh, well, I mean, can you do something about it? You maybe can. Um, a few of us had cards that could have stopped you doing stuff. Daz had a card that managed to stop me. Um, if I would have gone, for, if I would have tried to win, and, I, and that would have been a valid thing to do that turn, I just hadn't counted it up and figured it out. Um, but even that, it's just it's like completely out of the blue. Do you know, it, it doesn't feel. I like things to feel close and sort of. But that doesn't mean that I don't like the game. Like the game itself to play is really fun. Like ev- like we talked about, every mini game is is just great and it's just suspenseful. And then the suspense is broken because it's just like a jump scare. I don't think I know what you mean when you say out of the blue because no one else saw it coming. But like Tristan's win, he had planned for that from the start, so it was never out of the blue. So it was very yeah, yeah. strategically played. He did say I that, think like, that was you complete... saw you saw us all building up towards yeah. the victory. Yeah, but I but... think Tristan's win was a complete missed timing. You left yourself wide open. You only had like what four guards? He had seven. Twelve and I had two guards. Hands. Yeah, but you, <laughs> yeah, but we would have all had scheme. Like we had scheme, like scheme enders, like reactions. Jackie had one. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Daz had another one. He could have. Daz could have stopped yours. We yeah, all could have, but we just missed time though. Yeah, but I, but I think it wasn't a a, a well timed play. I think it maybe could have gone a bit higher. And then smashed it all out and easily. Like I said, though, there was there was definitely no room for that because Sam would have got it the no, next turn. But I think you, I, I think it'd be fair to say you were quite. You must have been a bit surprised to think, oh, no one's managed to stop anything. Yeah, no, there was yeah. there was three. There was you, Lecky, and Sam after me. So mm-hmm. any one of you could have brought me down from twelve influence yeah. if you'd successfully, you know, either yeah. foiled the scheme or schemed against me. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but I did have um, tons of guards and another. So defense, what is it? The reaction, the foiler yeah. scheme one yeah. that could have. So as I say, I couldn't understand why it feels like it was out of the blue, but it was really the way it was played. It wasn't. It's the way the game plays. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and I think every every victory in Spartacus has been like that, where you you're going out on a limb. The only way that you can sort of guarantee that you're going to be safe is if you manage to be the person who goes after, um, who's the last in the round order, and then you can play down all of your schemes and hope that nobody else has got any foils. To throw at you, or you know, you counterfoils. To, you have to forward load your hands with guards. Yeah, or and you have to have the, the look of having the person after you be the host, mm. so that you are definitely last in round order. And 
I've seen that happen a couple of times in this game, but it's not consistent enough for it to be relied on. So the only way you can go out and win, really, is by doing it, is just going balls out and putting all of your cards on the table and hoping you've got enough guards and, and foils to counter anything that's coming at you. Well, that's the thing, because if, if it hadn't worked for you then... It would have definitely worked for Dave or you or... Well, whatever. not just that, but you were in a position where you had no slaves, oh, no God. guards. Oh, God, yeah, I discarded everything for <laughs> it. I had no that one dude, all, <laughs> that one all slave. All we'd have to do in the next round is invite you. And you'd be like, I, I can't play. Yeah, I can, and you'd start I can send my slave and then I'll be... Um, yeah, and it would have screwed you over and opened it up for everyone else. So it was, is that is that... Is that not an issue? Is that just an issue for me where the game can sort of, it's no, no, along no, quite, I understand, quite I understand a nice pace and then suddenly it just, right at the end, it just, it, it escalates so quickly to like, and, it, and it's not like we were where we usually are. When you were in like two, three, like, it's like, it's away. like being at a great party and you're having a good time and then somebody turns the music off and tells you to get out. Yeah, interesting. Like, you know, that's it. You know, Feels so wow. good to ruin the party. <laughs> I, I, I agree. It is a big surprise usually when someone goes, right, I'm going to all of a sudden throw down two cards, get two influence, and then sell off all my slaves, and I'm out of here with a win. But at the same time, that's exactly like how every other episode of the series finished. <laughs> <laughs> it like, party artist would have absolutely no money. And then he'd be like, oh no, everyone's ganging up against me. And then all of a sudden it would be like, oh, by the way, I've crucified your families. I'm out of <laughs> And it's just the way it was. And I think it's really, it's really nice implementation. Like, the, I don't know if the game designers wanted it to happen or if it just happened for it to be like that. But that's how the games ended up, and it, it just it just feels very much like the TV program. Oh yeah, that definitely it's set around. Yeah. But I, I do feel like that bit. I don't know. It just it moves too quick. I know what you mean. mean it can. Like, it doesn't it doesn't take away from the the fun of the game. Um, it just ends a bit. It just, I just feel like it ends a bit quick. I think in general, like I think it did from the very start. I just think as we go on, and for some reason, it, every time it's more of a surprise. Yeah, I don't. I shouldn't be. I should be expecting it. But. <laughs> yeah, it it doesn't really feel like adding the game length mm. adds enjoyment. It just adds more time that you're playing the game. It's It'd not like one of these that. epic games where you're conquering territories and you know, like Game of Thrones and stuff like that as well, where you're building towards these victory conditions. I don't yeah. think I've ever played a game of this where it hasn't been like you know that quick sudden surprise ending. So I think that first if you game, go in expecting that and just prepping for it, I think it's probably the best mentality yeah. to take in. I think I think because the first game that I played of it, I think we, was it like seven eight players. It was six players at UK Games Expo. It's the one that it went till about two in the morning. Yeah, three of the guys we'd but never I met think, before. <laughs> but I think that's what I'm trying to chase that dragon. Well, the because the, the, the glory like the first of the first dragon. time you yeah, played it. Yeah, because that particular game. People were hitting 12 influence, getting knocked back. Someone else had hit 12 influence. So we're like four or five sort of, oh, we don't really have, we've not really had that since it's been, all right, okay, well, uh, Dave's won or Jackie's won or Tristan's won or whatever, whoever's won. And it felt like, I don't know why, but it felt like in that first game, there was a, people had more cards to deal with, run, like runaway wins. I don't know if it's just luck of the draw as you're talking about or or what, but it just felt like that particular game, it was so close. Everybody was just getting there and then, oh, no, you're not one. Do you know what I mean? I perspective, that was bad play on my part because I was looking at everyone's table going, oh, he's only on about six influence. I've got all these foils. Yeah, but he made it I'd fun. get rid of them. <laughs> he made it fun. <laughs> I know, but I was like, I'm, I'm going to get rid of them for now because there's not as much risk of someone running away with it. Just discard them, get the money for him. Use that for something else. Yeah. And then I didn't have them when I needed them. It wasn't a capitulation. It was just bad gameplay, really, from yeah. our point of view. I don't know if yeah. it's like, you know, the time, the evening, we're just making bad decisions. But <laughs> it's just like, oh, no, yeah, Tristan might win this. So I'm just going to see what's going to happen. Oh, no, he did. Should we let him and see if we see? see how it pans out. We're all, well, we're all greedy bastards. And we're all waiting for the other person to save the day for us so we could swing and win. And it just didn't work my car. out. Yeah. Why we've never won at Dead of Winter. <laughs> <laughs> we won it once. <laughs> Co-op. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't With count. No traitor. Still, still counts. Still counts. Um, yeah, but this game's now um, six years old. It kind of it's starting to feel a bit of its age, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like it's been necessarily replaced by other shinier new games. It's it does it feels very unique, and it does what it does very well. I I feel like the only thing that's changed over the six years is it feels slightly simpler. So a lot of the elements feel a lot more simple than some of the newer stuff but I don't think any other game since this has managed to gel so many different miniature games or mechanics yeah. so well into one sort of complete package 
there's like an intake of breath before we play this where we all know that we're about to jump into backstabbing, treachery and maliciousness that we don't, I, I don't think we get that with any other game. You know that you go into it knowing this is the most anti-cooperative game, I think, in our collection. And I think with that in mind, it's sort of, it's a bit of an yeah. event. You know, like with Eclipse, you're going for all that war and stuff, but there's always that that knowledge that you're going to fight each other up front, whereas with Spartacus, there's always the trading of potential allies who are going to screw you over. I don't know. It feels like there's so much more backstabbing. It is literally, it says yeah. on the box, a game of blood and treachery, and it absolutely is. It takes a little bit of your friendship. Each it does. Time it does. It takes a chunk out of, you know, like, and, and everybody's got like a flushed face, you know, and they're all like a bit angsty and stuff. And I don't, I just... I don't. I can't name another game that that triggers that wonderful, yeah. nasty <laughs> gameplay that that Spartacus does. And it's uh, it's very colourful, isn't it? The language and the, <laughs> using the theme. It's, yeah, it's uh, recommended for ages seventeen plus. Yeah, so don't right, don't right. get it for your kids. It's very blue. Oh yeah, language is very blue. Yeah, it's very true to the series in that respect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They literally they use quotes from it to name the cars throughout the whole thing, and they're using. Yeah. Especially that one that you're thinking of right now. It's all yeah, swear. Anybody who's seen the series knows. It's all, knows about, what it's all about a god's appendage. <laughs> yes, I can see several times. But it just gets you into the mood for, for the game. Is <laughs> <laughs> out. Ooh, leave that where I found it. <laughs> Dave, since there's no more expansions, would you still consider playing it again? Uh, yeah, I play it again. I uh, I still really like it. I just think it ends too quickly for me. Um, I think I just expect more from it. I think I expect that epic, and it, and it doesn't quite get there. It, but for what it is, like you say, there's nothing quite like it. Like, and, and the way that it, it gels all these systems that are completely sort of different to each other, like it pulls from all sorts of different like design spaces, and they just work together so well, and it's so thematic, and, and yeah, just, um, just the end. It's worth a punt just to see what the game's about, isn't it, really? Just yeah. to kind of like have a go at it and see how it all works. And I will say, I think we took, I don't know if we touched on this, but the the more players that you have, the better I, th- I think it is. Because I think the social aspects of the game are, the, are what make it work. Because all, these, all yeah. these disparate mechanics come together because of the people that you're with. Yeah. Um, and I don't think they necessarily work so well on their own. Yeah, yeah, you need you need to be completely fresh to the game as well, so you don't know what's going on. So much as everything's a surprise. I think that's part of my problem. I feel like it's just, if, uh, I don't know. Yeah, or like everyone around the table needs to be like that, or yeah. everyone needs to be well involved in the meta of the game. So you need to know which houses to watch out for for like sneaky last minute wins, which gladiators are best bang for buck, and which are worth auctioning and stuff like that. So it's it takes a bit of getting used to as a game. It needs a bit of practice. Well, I still love it. <laughs> reiterating what everyone else has said it's emotional <laughs> in sort of not getting upset about it or anything it's just uh, it brings out that sort of tension all the time yeah and no matter like when I felt like I was in the lead I never felt safe you know that you're going to be targeted you just paint yeah. a big target on your back nothing really goes that well like in other games when you take the lead it never you never quite feel at as risk as you do with this yeah, you feel you feel more comfortable when you. Well, yeah, you you're playing against a load of people who are solely out to get you when you take that lead. Yeah, like if somebody's really far behind, there's no point kicking them while they're down. It's like, what are they going to do? Yeah, but the game is is kind of like a slow, steady build up, and then an explosive race to the finish line, like every time. So you can't be like, oh, he's. Chances are, if Sam's ahead, he's blown all his wad anyway. Like, he's used all his cards and now he's ahead. And me and Tristan have just got a handful of cards. And we look we look like we're behind, but we're not behind. We're in front. It didn't mean anything. I still had rubbish cards. So it doesn't really mean that you could win with them now. They could have been good cards, though. They were, they were good cards. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I love about this. The fact that we can keep talking about it like this. Yeah. And yeah. you, you do end up analysing everything you've done in the game. You're not thinking about, God, you know, if I'd have played that card at that time or if I'd have not wasted all that money on that yeah, you, piece of crap arm. Yeah, analyse everything like you did in the game and then also analyse that one thing that Tristan did that I can like, <laughs> completely never forgive him for. I, think, I, I told you he was going to betray you. I told you. The uh, <laughs> love him or hate him, the intrigue cards that you play on each other in this game have like so much more value than something like Lords of Waterdeep, where the intrigue deck is a bit like, 
oh, I'm going to give you an extra guy and I'm going to give me two guys. You know, and it's this sort of mutually collaborative kind of effect. In this case, it's a mild inconvenience. Yeah, Yeah. or or sometimes, oh, no, that benefits you, but it also (laughs) benefits me a little bit. Whereas in Sparkers, it's definitely going to take chunks out of you, you know, when I play this and I'm going to get somebody else to help me play it on you. It's like doubles the whammy, you know, like um, you, you borrow each other's influence to screw somebody else over or, you know, to, to power yourself further ahead. Or better yet, you borrow someone's influence to screw them over. Yeah. Just a really rough slot in the wounds. Like, like, like Tristan did. No, no, Tristan made Lucky like, pay for it in gold. It took his influence. And his influence. Yeah. <laughs> but less about that. No, no, it's, it's no, not, it's not personal. Well. Like it. It's just a game. Oh no, wait, it is because <laughs> the rule book says it's not personal. Doesn't mean it isn't actually personal. I'd love to hear suggestions though from in the comment section if people have them for other games that, that capture this sort of uh, brutal backstabbing and treachery. Yeah, Avalon's definitely definitely up there for it. Completely, it's a lot shorter as well. Completely different game, but but you have way less control, I think, in, in Avalon. It's a good ten minute party game. Well, the way to play Avalon is to just shout at people so quickly <laughs> that they're just bamboozled into going along with whatever you say, which can work. That's just one method of playing it. Like it. It's the only way. The I other know. is to be bamboozled. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it'll be um, it'll be great to hear about you know some of people's experiences with Spartacus. Game of with Thrones. Games. Game of yeah. Thrones is a game we need to get on the. Um, we need seven for it. We tried it with the five way, and it just something was kind of felt like it was kind of missing. I think Game of Thrones would... Uh, I'd like to play that with you guys. I think that'd be more towards the approach that you were talking about where it builds towards a steady yeah. like ending rather yeah. than just like, oh no, somebody's won the game. Because there's a turn limit as well. You kind of know where you are with the game with the turn limit, don't you? You know that the end is approaching and somebody's going to win. Mm. And Whereas when it's open-ended like that, I feel like I'm banging on. I'm not really that, that but it doesn't... There's arguments I feel both like, ways. Like if, yeah. if, if you play in Game of Thrones and you know there's however many seven or eight turns or whatever and you're way behind and you can see that you're going to lose, then, mm. you know, yeah. it's as it's as scripted as uh, as but, anything else. But, but Ga- Game of Thrones can be just as janky the other way with yeah. you don't have the right opening moves as like one or two houses. You're never going to let then, that go, are you? You're <laughs> never going to let that go. Then you're, you're destined to lose. Everybody knows Baratheon should take They don't the know. <laughs> if you miss the game, you don't. And then when someone says it at the end of the game, you think, Oh, well, what was the point in that? The, the first time I ever heard about Game of Thrones, one of my friends was... Uh, this was before I even started playing board games again. This is... We should clarify, Game of Thrones the board game, board, not, Game not of Thrones the, the board uh, game, yeah. Card game. And I'd never... I'd never been... I don't been playing any board games. Um, and he told me that he went around to his friend's house and played this board game, and it was Game of Thrones. And, he, and, he, and I won't repeat the exact language, but he said he was never going to play another board game again. <laughs> Nobody told him properly how to play, and they just battered him for like four hours. Um, and I thought, sounds like something I'd quite like to be involved in. <laughs> <laughs> and then I yeah. got in a trade. Or battering someone. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> depends on the day. <laughs> There's like a certain amount of masochistic enjoyment in these sorts of games. So yeah. like, I think it's just a, a buzz that everyone kind of likes. It can get a bit, little bit nasty in terms of like, you've got to like try and lie to your mates and get what, your own way. But at the same time, there's a load of fun in that because you can't do it at work, really. <laughs> and get away with it yeah, not, yeah. the people that do don't really come across well and um it's just it's just fun it's a bit bit of a role play a bit of a it's hilarious of a with strangers yeah. <laughs> stony-faced angry yeah. flushed you, strangers. you never know who's gonna flip <laughs> it's it's one of those super competitive games you have to go in with the right mindset and and it's like eclipse for me i, I love losing at it i love winning more but it's one of those I just love to have experienced and uh, like an eclipse, just playing through it, seeing how it pans out and even getting your arse handed to you by the end yeah. of it. I think it's more fun, fun than eclipse. Really? I don't think it's a better Ooh. game. It's different. It's At I least think it's more fun. Yeah. It's more like hearted, I think. You, yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. If you can take it that in, way. In eclipse, you've got to take over by any means. I'm saying that's usually brute force. But in Spartacus, it's just, it feels a bit more cerebral in this. And it's just the way you communicate with everyone. God's appendage. It's, yeah, exactly. Jupiter's wangle piece. <laughs> Beep. That should be a t-shirt. Right then. Well, um, we're available on Twitter. If you want to wade in with some extra comments, you can find us at atboard underscore chitless. And we're on Facebook as well. If you want to join on there and say hello. And some other places as well. Sam, what are you going to... Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Facebook done that. SoundCloud. 
SoundCloud are on there yet. Get YouTube. involved. Comment, like, and share. iTunes. YouTube and iTunes. Smash that like button. Ring that bell. Woo! Nothing to say on YouTube. Um, but yeah, like that Spartacus, a game of blood and treachery. Um, more on focus on the treachery than anything else. <laughs> Um, but get involved. It's um, it's it is a really fun game, and it's still very much relevant these days than it was in 2012. Even though they don't do any more Spartacus on TV anymore, which is a shame because it's amazing. Great Watch series. it as well. Watch it. Dress up in togas, play the game, and then don't talk to your friends ever again afterwards. <laughs> Perfect. What a weekend! There's a bank holiday coming up. There's worse ways to spend it. Trust me. Bye.